Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve kth largest element in an array, leak code number 215. So we're given an integer array called nums and another integer k. And we need to return the kth largest element in the array. So note that it is the kth largest element in the sorted order, not the kth distinct element. Okay, we'll talk about that. So let's look at this example here. So we can see 3, 2, 1, 5, 6, 4, and k is equal to 2. So what it's saying here is it's the kth largest element in sorted order. So if we were to sort it, well, then it would be one at the beginning and then two and then three, four, five, and six, but it's the kth largest. So the largest is six. The second largest would be five. So the output would be five. Now the second example will really show you what they mean here. So three, two, three, notice there is duplicates, one, two, four, five, five, six. So if k is equal to four, well then if you were to sort the numbers, you're gonna get one, two, two, three, three, four, five, five, six in order. So we're looking for the fourth largest element in the sorted order. So six is the biggest, five is the second biggest, and then the other five. And so the fourth largest in sorted order would be four. So not the fourth largest to distinct number, so not six, then five, then four, then three, we are including those duplicates. And so the answer here would be four. Okay, so let's use that same example. So again, you could easily just sort this array, get the kth largest, and you could do that in big O of n log n time, but we're going to get something better than that. Now for that, we're actually going to use a heap. And for these types of questions, there's generally two different ways you can use the heap. So the first one that definitely makes sense is using a max heap. So if we use a max heap, well, you know, that generally makes sense because we're looking for large elements or the kth largest element. So what you could do is transform this into a heap. I'll just flash to it. Okay, so this is our max heap. You can see it holds the heap property. So our biggest element is on the top and everything below is going to be below that. And that property holds every single step here. This is bigger than all of the ones below it. So it's a max heap. We can build a max heap by calling heapify in O of n time and in Python, Heapify is actually constant space. So really what it does is it doesn't actually build this tree here. That's just how we visualize it. It would actually kind of move around these elements so that they're in their heap form. So it does that in place in the array. So that would be constant space. Okay, so now that we have a max heap, if you wanted the kth largest element, well, then you could basically just pop four times or k times. So if you pop once, we are going to take this six off. We'll mark that we've popped once and we are going to fix the heap. So we'll fix the heap that will get promoted so will this and now we have a new heap when we restructure that due to the pop whenever we pop it's going to take log of the heap size to do that so roughly log n time to pop off since there's n things in the heap so we've popped off once we will pop off another one this five is going to get promoted and then so is this four and so is this two so again it takes log time to fix that now we've popped off two different things if we pop off this five again that's going to be pop number three this four four is going to be promoted and so is this three. Now our heap is fixed and when we pop our very last and kth time, well, we are going to basically be left with the correct element. Okay, so basically to do that, you could make sure to pop k minus one times in a loop and then you know if you pop that final time, then you're going to be left with the element desired. So because it takes O of n time to build the heap, this is the heapify part. And to do the popping k times, we're going to pop from the heap. So that'll give you a k log n there. And you have to actually leave this as the total time complexity because it's not clear which is worse, n or k log n. Uh, but in general, this is definitely a lot better than n log n because you can roughly assume that k will be smaller than n. Technically, you could ask the nth largest thing, which would basically be you pop out all of the elements from the heap. But because the problem is talking about the kth largest element, you know, you'd probably want like the first largest, the fifth largest, the tenth largest. You most likely wouldn't ask for like the billionth largest. That seems kind of silly. So assuming, basically assuming that k is significantly smaller than n, uh, then this runtime using the heap will be a lot better than sorting the array. So let's code that up and then I'll show you a different heap solution afterwards. So the first thing we're going to do is import the heap queue library. That's how we use heaps in Python is you basically just use arrays, but you give it to the heap queue library. And the first thing we're going to do is make a max heap. Now Python's heap queue actually only supports a min heap. So what you'd have to do is negate all of the elements that basically takes the biggest value and makes it the most negative. So we'll negate all of them. So for I in the range of the length of the numbers, we'll go through and just negate them. So nums at I 
i we'll set that equal to their negative version so negative nums at i now all of them are negative aka the biggest value is going to be the smallest value so it's very important to do that before we heapify so we'll heap q dot heapify the nums array and now it's restructuring the array in place so via constant space in a way that's going to make it act as a max heap then we just need to pop k minus one times so we'll just do for underscore because you don't really need the index for underscore in the range of k minus one this is going to run k minus one times because it's basically zero up until k minus two we'll heap q dot heap pop from the nums so nums basically is our heap so we pop off k minus one things and then we know if you pop off just one more thing that's going to be the kth largest so we'll return the negated because we had them negated so you need to kind of make it positive again the negated version of heap q dot heap pop from the nums array just that final pop there that'll be your value of interest but since it's negated we kind of need to multiply it by negative one to make it positive again and there you go that's going to be a solution and it's a really good one it definitely will pass the test cases and now i'll show you how to use a min heap instead now the min heap version is very interesting so we're not just going to call heapify on this and turn it into a min heap we're actually going to build up the heap as we go now the heap that we're going to create is actually going to have a max number elements of k. It will never have more than k elements in it and we're going to see why that's going to help. So basically what you would do here is you would have an empty heap and we go through the array. We see the number three and we say hey does the heap have k things in it yet? No it doesn't. The heap has zero things in it. So we are going to push this number into the heap. And so when we go to the next element here we say okay does the heap have k things? No it just has one thing. And so we are going to push this element into the heap. When it pushes into the heap, it's going to restructure like this. And then we are going to move this over again. We see a three. Okay. Still, we only have two elements in the heap. We'll put that in there. We see the one. Still, we only have three elements, so we can put this in. And the three is kind of going to get demoted over here, so the two can go over here. And then we'll have the one over here. So now our heap has k things or four things. So when we go over here, when we say, does the heap have k things, it answers yes. Okay. We we are going to temporarily push this in here. So we will actually put in a two, which I'll put it in say here. But from here, we don't want the heap to have K plus one things. It's going to stay at size K. And we do that by when we push one on, we also pop one off. So we push in that two and then we pop off the one. So we take off the one that is going to promote back like this. So again, we have our heap restored and it stays at K things. We look at the next element here that is going to get pushed into the heap. By the way, a reminder, since our heap has k things, then it's going to take log of k time to push into that heap. So basically, we're going through the n items and we're doing a log k operation. So that'll end our runtime in n log k. And our heap has too many things, so we need to pop one off. We get the smallest, that'll put it there, and then we get restructured like this. Okay, we see the five. We're going to push that in. That will go somewhere, say, like this. And then we again pop one off. We take off the two this three will get promoted and we do something like that. We do this basically again. We have a five here that is going to get pushed back into the heap. Say it goes here and then we are going to pop one off. So we'll take that off and then we'll push this up and promote like this. Okay, last thing here, we see the six. We're going to push that into the heap. Say that goes over here and then we pop this off. This four will get promoted to the top. This six will get promoted. Now yet again, almost magically this time, we see that the correct correct answer is left on the top. So you could definitely just pop this off, return that, and that would be your answer. But why did this work? Okay, I just described an algorithm without really explaining it. So why did this work? Well, let's start this again and think about it. We look at the three. Okay, we'll put in a three. We see the two. Okay, that's going to go to the top. Notice the smaller elements are going to get stuck at the top. So when we go over here, we are going to push in the three. We go over here, we push in the one. That is going to be the smallest element. Now it's very very interesting when you get over here so we push in the two that is going to show up say over here and then we're going to take off the smallest thing so it makes a ton of sense to take off the smallest thing because remember what we're asking for we're asking for the kth largest thing and so these are the k largest that we've seen so these are the k largest things because it's size k this is stuck at size k and it's organized so that the thing at the top is the smallest of those so if you take the k largest largest things and you look at the smallest of them, well, that's going to be the kth largest thing. So if you were to progress this and get to the end of the array,
gray, you would again see that the number of four would be your kth largest thing. So that's why this works. We are going to get a runtime of basically n times for the array size. We are going to do a pop operation, which will be log k. We also push into the heap. And so that also is log k. And this is going to take up k space. So we are explicitly storing k things in the heap. And we're not doing that in place because we're not calling heapify. So, okay, let's code this solution up. I think it's really cool. Okay, so we start with an empty heap, which is actually just a list because we pass lists to the heap queue library. Luckily, the heap queue library uses a min heap. So we'll loop through the numbers for each num in nums. We just ask the simple question, hey, does the heap have less than k things? If the length of our min heap is less than k, all we want to do is push into the heap. So we'll heap queue dot heap push into the min heap and we'll give that the number. Okay, but otherwise we want to do the operation, which is actually called push pop. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's going to push something into the heap and then after that pop one off. So we'll heap queue dot heap push pop onto the min heap. We will give it the number and then it's automatically going to pop one off after that. After we've gone through all of the numbers, the heap will have those k largest things. And so we just want the kth largest thing, which is going to be the smallest of all of those and it's a min heap. So the smallest of those is going to be the min heap at zero. At least that's how you interact with it in Python. This very first value here, that'll be guaranteed to be the top of the heap, which in this case is the smallest of those. Okay, so if we run this, generally this is considered the best solution. It's actually not clear which is better, the min heap or the max heap solution. But given the runtime here, you can probably guess that for the values of n and k that they're using, that this solution is generally the preferred one. Drop a like if this was helpful, guys. I hope it was and have a great day. Bye-bye.